Have you ever wondered what would happen to an electric car when its battery is at absolute zero? Well, that's exactly the question we're going to ask today using three representative EVs from three segments. We've got the Audi e-tron, we've got a Tesla Model 3, and we've got the cute little Honda e-city car to represent our smallest entrant. We're here at Rockingham, a safe test environment, and all of the batteries are nearly flat. Let's find out what happens. The Tesla we're using is a Model 3 dual motor with 75 kilowatt hours of claimed usable capacity. The car has 346 horsepower and can crack 62 miles per hour in a manufacturer claimed 4.4 seconds or eke out up to 348 miles between charges, according to official European figures. On a Tesla supercharger, the Model 3 can gain an impressive 180 miles in 15 minutes. Our Audi e-tron 55 Quattro, by comparison, comes with 84 kilowatt hours of claimed usable capacity. It has a peak of 402 horsepower and a claimed 0 to 62 mile per hour sprint of 5.7 seconds, while range is quoted by Audi as 259 miles. On a 150 kilowatt fast charger, an Audi e-tron 55 can go from 0 to 80% battery or just over 200 miles of range in 30 minutes. Right, so here we are on the start line at Rockingham's National Circuit. I say we because I, I'm Sam in the Tesla Model 3 and I've got Abhishek, our head of electric vehicles next to me in the Audi e-tron and we're gonna communicate via handy walkie talkies because obviously while we're running on circuit together, we wanna to understand what's going on. Both of our cars have very low amounts of battery. Uh, this Tesla at the moment is showing 11%. Abhishek, my Tesla's on 11%. What, what's your Audi e-tron on at the moment? 15%. Okay, so 15%. Now that's pretty, that's pretty close actually. I can't be bothered to calculate the exact differences. This isn't an exact science test. What we're doing, of course, is we're actually just trying to see what happens after these batteries get to 0%. We're not trying to see, oh, we what, what car's gonna go furthest or, or you know, what car does the better job after 0%. And because my Tesla has a bit more range than your Audi, quite a lot more actually, um, we're probably at a comparable state at the moment. So shall we get this show on the road? Absolutely. After you. This is going to be the most boring start that this track has ever seen. But I'm going to put the car in D and I'm going to just coast away. I'm in range mode and I'm going to follow you and try and see what happens. So I'm in chill mode as well. So we're both in comparable modes as well. I've turned the aircon and everything off to simulate what someone might be doing if they are low on range. Yeah, I've done the same. Uh, I regret wearing my warmest shirt now, but uh, hey ho, I'm in the car. It's pretty warm in here. Um, but yeah, the, the road speeds we're gonna stick to are about up to 50 miles per hour. Yeah, if you hang back, which you're doing, that means you won't get any you know, reduction in drag, uh, so you won't have any advantage. But as I said earlier, not, not a real science test here. We're not trying to get exact differences in how these cars are out. We're just trying to see what happens when they get to 0%. So far, 9% in this Tesla, it's not really done anything other than illustrate on the screen that I'm not, I haven't got a lot of miles to go. It's not really done anything, so I'm not entirely sure. Does it, I'm assuming it must kick in and start saying you've got to charge up. It is sort of giving me the option to look at where other chargers are and things like that in the menu. The Tesla systems, even though they're not the quickest to navigate, I mean, it takes quite a while just to do some simple things through the infotainment system. But everything is in there. It literally is a massive computer. Um, so you can get all the information you want. So were you to be out in the sticks or were you to be in a place where you weren't familiar with your local charging network, the Tesla system is up there with the best of them to find where you can get chargers or whether it's even possible and even how much it would cost. Obviously the Tesla supercharger network is one of the best out there actually, um, which actually makes me think, Abhishek being our electric vehicles expert will know. Abhishek, I was just thinking the, the supercharger network for Teslas is massively extensive isn't it already um is the network for audi that they haven't got their own specific network yet have they they've they've you're just using the general network out there at the moment right yes exactly well audi as part of the volkswagen group have invested in the ionity charging network uh, but you have to rely on other people's chargers as well because ionity chargers aren't everywhere so the tesla supercharger network is actually one of the biggest usps but they have recently opened it up in the Netherlands for other makes and manufacturers to access them as well. So that's actually quite useful from an EV driving ownership perspective that you can use the very extensive Tesla supercharger network, even if you don't drive a Tesla. I'm gonna gun it out these bends, not because I'm, you know, as much as I'm enjoying cruising around. Okay, it's not saying anything. When I gun it, it's not saying like, don't, don't put your foot down. It's just happy to do that. 
Um, the only negative is when I'm gunning, I'm having to break into Ben, so I guess I'm giving it some regen, which is a bit counterproductive, but I'll try not to do too much. Well, getting regen is what you would do if you were actually about to run out of juice. So you'd be trying to get as much regen as you can. Uh, but so, fun fact, the Audi in range mode uh, ma uh, caps you at 55 miles an hour. That's interesting, because I have the full, yeah, I've got everything. The car doesn't feel any different. It feels just as quick. Uh, and I'm definitely not capped at 55 mile an hour because I've, I've clicked over 60 a couple of times now. One thing that's changed is the battery has gone from orange to red on the screen, but still, that's a pretty low level warning. Um, it's not screaming at me. And obviously, you know, if you're in a petrol car, you do normally have like a flashing light on the dash, don't you? Saying, you know, fill me up ASAP. This isn't doing that. Um, although admittedly, I have it displaying the percentage. So perhaps it's thinking, Come on, you must already be aware of what the battery's at. You're looking at the battery on the screen, you numpty. I do have the little yellow charger battery now sign up on the, on the dashboard. Uh, and my range is now 12 miles. Probably has something to do with the driving style beforehand. I'm at 7%. I'm just going to do a practice launch. I'm just going to burn it off. I'm just going to just going to let... Oh, it's down to six already now. Okay, one practice start. I love doing this in this Tesla. Oh, oh. It's definitely reduced my power. I was wrong. That launch was not Tesla-like at all. It was a really steady launch. So I've definitely gone down to a much le reduced level of power. It feels fine when you're rolling. But off the line, absolutely no doubt about it. That was pulling away at about the same pace as my mum's old Vauxhall Zafira. So I think, I think this is now into a reduction mode. Um, certainly, I know with chill mode, it probably is already reducing the power a bit already, right? It will be reducing the power already in chill. And like you said, I mean, you don't need that much power to actually keep rolling. It's more of the start and stop where you need more, where it consumes more. What happens, you know, if you get an electric car battery super low, does it actually get to 0% or is it like a petrol car where you still have a few miles in the tank? So depending on the manufacturer, but everyone does do this, uh, there is a bit of a buffer range at the top and bottom end of a EV's battery. So you've got a stated range. So you've got a sorry, you've got a stated uh, capacity, and you've got a usable capacity. Uh, that extra capacity that is not usable is there so that you do have some backup, and also there to protect the battery from going completely flat and damaging it. Um, oh, my Tesla's just flashed up saying, "Plan your next charge." You are almost too far from known charging locations. Interesting. Right. So the reason it wasn't panicking is because it knows that there's a charging station within range. So that's actually quite cool. So rather than just assuming I knew what I was doing, it actually thought, Sam's not an idiot. He must be driving to a charging station. But little does it know I am an idiot and I am not driving to a charging station. I am just hammering around the national circuit in Rockingham's infield. Uh, so I'm going to click cancel. I'm still on 3% though. Uh, my Audi has just flashed up a message saying restricted performance. And now I have a flashing turtle on my screen, which is very cute, but also very similar to what the Polestar does. Gives me a turtle in turtle mode. Uh, yeah, okay. So if you're wondering why we've cut from the in-car and I'm now stood next to a broken down Tesla Model 3, it's because we slightly underestimated how far these electric cars would go. The Tesla's here, the Audi's just out of shot around the corner. They both went, well, this especially went much longer than we thought. Um, we kind of anticipated 10 or 15 minutes. Don't have any power. I mean, this movement now is just rolling. We're on a, we're on a slight hill, um, but I have no power. The power steering still works, um, but the accelerator does nothing. As you can see, we've done 12.8 miles. I failed to reset the trip in time, so it's actually about 13.2, I think. Um, just over 20 minutes. So that's pretty, pretty impressive. Basically, the car was telling me all the way through, you need to charge, you need to charge. But it knew that there was a charger locally. So it actually wasn't screaming at me and it didn't start screaming at me until way, way after the over set. Um, Abhishek, however, in the Audi, he had his power limited. He was down to 55 miles per hour. That was the top speed of his car. So he was cruising around really slowly for quite some time, but he only got two and a half miles after 0%. And then he managed to, this is a trick of his expertise with electric cars, he managed to turn it off, start it up again, and then get an extra half a mile out of it, turn it off, start it up again, get an extra half a mile. But ultimately it was done. This isn't a definitive test, of course. There were so many variables, our driving style, 
all of the things you can think of, the lines we took on the circuit, so we absolutely shouldn't look at the mileage as we got as some kind of definitive result of one car is this and one car is that. But ultimately, I think it's clear that the Tesla here does get you quite a bit further on than you'd expect it to, even though it's already at 350 miles claimed range from factory, you probably got a few miles in the tank of safety. And even cars like the Audi, they've got a few extra miles on top. While we didn't capture the full run in the Tesla and Audi, we did in the Honda e, which also proved to have a little more in reserve than initially expected. So here we are in the Honda e. Of our three cars, it has the smallest amount of range by quite some margin. Just over 130 miles is claimed by Honda when it leaves the factory. And I've conveniently got us to 0% battery. I didn't notice any change in the power. I have a big plug symbol uh, on the dash and it is saying I'm in a turtle mode, but I still have quite a lot of punch here. Um, it's giving me an illustration of a turtle on the screen as if to say you don't have as much power, but it doesn't feel like I'm really down on power at all. Um, we're doing 56 around a bend here. The stranded, the stranded other EVs we've been testing today, they're out on the circuit still. So we're 0%. And we were at 028.43 miles in this car. So we've done a mile now. Oh wow, look, we're on an incline. And I can't really get it up the hill. We're up to 41. So this is where it starts to get scary now. Let's say you're going along the A1 and you hit one of the sections where there's a bit of an incline. And you'd be looking in that mirror and you'd be thinking, whoa, that lorry is getting close. I don't like this. Where is my next char Where's my next charging station? Yes, we're down to the slowest definitely now. This is barely over 40. Really, really struggling. Do we even have power? Am I just rolling? Oh, there is power. It's like, wow. It's like the first degree of throttle movement or accelerator movement. And I have, oh no, I think I've lost power. I think we're just rolling. This doesn't feel like anything is happening now. I've gained, I've gained a mile an hour, a couple of mile an hour now, so there must be something. So I'm still, I mean, we're now five miles, six miles even, over. 37 miles per hour, my foot is into the carpet. It makes no difference. 39 mile an hour. So we're still gaining speeds. I mean, there, this is a slight decline, this section of circuit but you are fully into crawl, crawl home mode now. I'm doing 18 miles per hour and that's with some downhill. So we are like, I mean, I've been in faster pedalos on a lake, 20 mile an hour. Oh, I, just, I just want this car to get me back to the pit lane because I wanted to do it. It's, it's doing really well. I mean, we've, we're nine miles and I'm really impressed with that because it had the smallest range to start with. So it doesn't have, you know, the, the, the space to really, <laughs> Harry's, Harry's, come on, Harry, I'm trying to make it to you on the corner. It doesn't have like anything in the bag really, does it? So ultimately, you know, you would have thought Honda would advertise it with pretty much the maximum range it can come with. Oh no, we're on a hill, it's not gonna make it. We're not gonna get there. We're not gonna get to Piff Paff which is one of the corners, by the way. Oh no, five mile an hour, we're out. Harry's running faster than we're driving. Uh, it's alive. I don't have any more juice. It's trying. I can feel it. Look, it's edging forwards. Oh no, it's dying. Come on, little Honda. Come on. I don't think I can make up the hill. I think we're going to have to, we're going to have to stop it there because we're going to be here for like 25 minutes. <laughs> it did all right. I mean, we got nine miles beyond what the indicated range would be. I mean, 0% was on when I left the pit lane and it carried on for nine miles. And at the start, I wasn't driving it particularly slowly. I was driving it like I was on an A road and I was still keeping up momentum. So that's really impressive. I mean, it means you've got enough, hopefully, to get you to the next service station. If you arrive at a service station and one of the chargers doesn't work or you just can't get to a charger, hopefully you'll have enough in the tank to get you to the next village or town and hopefully top it up. But ultimately, I think what this test has shown is that you really shouldn't drive your electric cars beyond 0%, but that was obvious to begin with. But if you do find yourself stuck, well, ultimately you've got a bit in, bit in reserve, thankfully. Well done, little Honda. Still love this car.
The car did properly conk out on the hill, but remarkably, when we went to rescue it later, it started and drove itself an extra 200 meters before stopping again. It was like the little Honda just didn't want to give up. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. We've a great mix of content in the pipeline, so it's probably best you subscribe to the Cinch channel to keep up. And of course, click that bell notification button to see it all first.